Good evening. This is Cece with Going Solo, and you are listening to WGSN DB Going Solo Network. If you all would like to give me a call and be on here live, we have the call number scrolling across the screen. We'd like to um, hear from you, so it would be great. We have a guest tonight, uh, John McRail, and unfortunately, he's not here yet in the lobby. So when he gets here, we'll we'll start chatting with him. And in the meantime, let me tell you a little bit about myself and about our station, WGSN. SNDB Going Solo Network is a singles um, talk station, and we focus really on the individual themselves, you know, traveling through relationship loss, through to really building yourself again and living the best life you can live. And hopefully your vibration will be higher. You'll know what you're looking for, and you'll be able to connect with that awesome partner that you've just uh, really need to be with. And so, but in the meantime, you are very happy with yourself. And that's what Going Solo Network is about. Here we have plenty of wonderful shows for you that run all the way from relationship building through to um, helping you through relationship loss. It gets you through finding yourself again. We have uh, talks about travel and business and books, great books to read, and just wonderful aspects to be able to enlighten yourself. And so that's what our uh, talk station is about. Myself, I am Cece Schatz, and I'm the Donyan of relationships. I help you, I'm kind of like the connector, you know, I help you move from, you know, really probably one of the toughest times in your life to really building yourself again into the kind of person you want to become and so that's pretty awesome and I connect you with really awesome people that you can um, really kind of relate to but the thing is is you know when we are in a community that is uplifting that brings joy to our lives that really embraces who we are it creates a wonderful environment and so that's going to move us into being the best that we can be and that's what our topic is tonight it's about being the better you and of course I'm not sure what is happening with uh, Dr. McGrail. Uh, this wonderful site we have is awesome but sometimes it can have bugs in it and uh, we can't sometimes get our guests to come through so I'm not sure if uh, if he is going to be able to join us or not I know that he was very excited about joining us so I'm not quite sure what the uh, you know what the deal is on that but we will we will just muddle through like we do being single we get through it and uh, that's what we'll be get because we'll, what we'll do will be on the other side of it and so that's what we're going to do so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lead us on through to our topic tonight and hopefully if uh, Dr. McGrail can uh, jump in we would love to have him if not I hope that he could give us a call or call me on my cell and we can patch him through to being able to be on the show tonight but you know we just have to roll with the punches right we have to roll with what life it, it deals us sometimes we don't like the cards that we're we're dealt but we uh, we know we have to move forward and move through them so let's get on with our show tonight because I'm kind of excited about bringing this to you I have talked to you about being the better you many times and I will talk to you again because sometimes you're not at the place to really hear what you need to hear we only can absorb what's around us when we're ready for it and so sometimes you know these great shows might be coming across your plate but you can't really quite grasp certain elements of it and that's because sometimes it's very it's very hard at the place you're in so that's okay so this is why we do some of the topics again we have a little twist on them and uh, sometimes we can bring something forward that you might not have uh, thought about before so or heard um, because you weren't quite ready at the first time around or you know maybe you're just uh, at that place now so let's on let's move on to being the better you and I wrote I not wrote it but I come up with a couple ideas and I uh, had some research here and some really great articles that come across but one is finding a hobby so often individuals that have come through my divorce support group what they've done is they've actually tapped back into who they were prior to the relationship and so usually what I say to them is what gave you joy at the beginning can you remember something that maybe made you happy and you can kind of embrace that again and many embrace the arts because it's a passion that they might very have and you know what we all have that streak of being creative don't we 
We all have a little bit of that. I don't know how, you know, different, I mean, guys, they have it too, because they build stuff, right? They build cars and they build things and they make things work and and they have different and we're going to have the boy and girl thing on after this and so Arnie's going to be on with me and that and we're going to get an idea of the differences of how we think men and women but guys have the same thing they have a creativeness about them and so often they tap in individuals tap in on what brought them joy prior to their um you know, prior to their life or, or prior to this moment. And then they evolve around that. I had one gentleman that uh, became a, a wonderful sculptor and was honestly so good. He was, he made, turned his house into like a gallery, his apartment, and he started having parties. He sold his artwork and it was amazing. And he went into painting and sculpting and all different kinds of things. We've had many people that have uh, went into the arts of some sort. We even have a a lady that is now an actress and we're quite proud of her for she went back to college and took courses and is a real professional now in her field and so we're real just really thrilled about that so finding a hobby that kind of gets your mindset you know twist it a little bit get your mindset off of maybe what you're experiencing now into creating something or helping others and that's another one is volunteering but create but helping stepping forward into another life for yourself is truly i think what's going to create that feeling of movement to you you know for you to be able to be able to move forward so so volunteering is just the most awesome thing giving of yourself so often when we are you know in a period where we're kind of down in the dumps, things are not really happening for us. When we give to someone else, when we actually step out of our being and we help someone else into their spot, whatever they're going through, it, it brings us this whole new kind of like a radiation feeling, right? And you step out of yourself, you put yourself forward into somebody else's shoes and magically you're transformed into a feeling of really doing something good. And so isn't that an, an enlightenment? And so I think that certainly is right up there with being, you know, making a better you, you know, uh, becoming someone else. Because when we can step out of ourselves for a while and into somebody else's shoes and give of someone else, that's pretty awesome. You know, that's a really awesome thing to do. The next one is clean out. Clean out. Wow, when I read that, I thought, what are they talking about? Clean out. Well, clean out is really getting rid of any stuff that you might have. Now, you can do this both personally and, you know, um, do it both uh, physically and mentally, you know, and uh, you can do it in many different ways. So what you want to do, and I was actually talking to, let me share with this with you. I was talking with a girlfriend of mine and uh, Trisha and she, um, Andresen, if any of you know her, Trisha Andresen, she's, you know, she does all of the warrior unstoppable and she is just that. But she was telling me how this past year in 2018, she really had to go through a lot of things. She was, she was um, really kind of thinking about her life and the track that she was going on and what she was doing. And she had to do some clearing, you know, and that took some, some energy for her. And I started thinking about that clearing. What is she talking about clearing? So I started thinking about my own life and how the path that I've had to go through. And sometimes when we have stuff in our lives, it creates this negative being around us, right? And so when we start doing this clearing, some of it is forgiving. You know, some of it is just stepping aside. And there's a lot of different things that we can do. And we could talk about the steps of clearing um, maybe in another show, because I think that would be a very important uh, a show in which to have. But when you start doing that and you start realizing it's not only the element of the clearing, it's the element of understanding that you have something to clear, isn't it? And so when you understand that you've got something in your life that maybe is a negative or something that's making you step sideways or step over it or stumble a bit, you know, when you have that kind of uh, atmosphere going on in your life, both uh, mentally and physically, you need to start taking some action on that. And so some of the action steps 
would be, for instance, we had Tasha on the show and um, so when she talked about happiness, really starting to, you know, step forward into happiness, that would be a sense of clearing, wouldn't it? Stepping away from any negativeness that you have and stepping forward into something that is positive and good. So that's really a great, a great aspect of it. But that clearing, I think that we have to do both physically and mentally. So when I say physically, what I mean is your being, your, your, what's around you. Are there elements in which you live in that is cre creating a negative vibe for you? And believe it or not, vibes are there. You know, it's an essence of where we live. Or, you know, do we live somewhere that is uplifting? Have you ever been into a home where you stepped into a house, you stepped into an environment and it went, whoa. You know, something like that, it was a little bit negative. It kind of took your breath away. Or you've stepped into places like, ah, this is great. That's why churches are so wonderful. Have you ever gone into, you know, some of these beautiful, beautiful, ornated churches and stuff? You get that sense of uh, well-being, that upliftment, that enlightenment. And so you want to create that in your own space, in your own space around you. You can create it in your home that you live in. So you want to clear out some things that you think might be negative. If they were your exes and you can afford to replace them, replace them. Get some new things. Buy some new things to claim your space, claim your area in which you're in. In your office, if you find, and I think our offices are very, very important. I, as you can see mine, I, there's not much fluff about me. I'm right here in the back of my kitchen. I'm in my house. This is my space that I enjoy. And I spend many, many hours in here, both in the day and in the evening. I can work in here sometimes all night long and realize, you know, oh my gosh, I, I got to go to bed. I got to go to sleep. But you want to create a space that you feel comfortable in that's yours. You want to put things out that's yours. So if you have an office that you go to every day, you spend, you know, most of your waking hours in that office, make that space your own. And I'm not saying make it cluttered or whatever, but bring something in it. For instance, I have a thing on the sign on the wall. Mine says, oh, with God, all things are possible. So I look at that all the time. So claim the space that's good for you. I have artwork that I really enjoy. I put them up and um, it just makes it my own. And so I think that that's very, very important. So as you start to move forward and you're thinking about creating a better you, your physical being around you is so vital, is so very, very important. We talked about volunteering, how important that is. Have some fun. Now, what the heck do they mean by that? Have some fun. How can one have fun when you don't quite know what it is that you want to do with your life, what you want to do? Well, that's pretty heavy, isn't it? Having fun is just embracing a today. It's embracing the moment that you're in and that creating that space and time. And I'm so sorry that Dr. McGrail uh, couldn't come in to whatever the show was tonight. And I hope that we can maybe schedule something again that he come in because he hasn't called me or anything. So I am terribly, terribly sorry about that. But he is on a different time zone. So let me just check my phone here just to be on the safe side. But I don't know what happened. So I do apologize for that. But here we are together once again. And this is one of my happy moments because I'm with you. So uh, so I never feel lonely when I'm here with you guys. So it's a really pretty awesome experience. So happiness. Let's think about fun, doing something fun. I do things all the time. I have a bunch of girlfriends that like to go out. They like to do different things. And here's this is something about me that maybe you guys don't realize is that I'm kind of like one of those people that kind of switch gears and I can do different things. And so I have a girlfriend, well, several girlfriends, and we go out and they love to go to bands. We have some great bands here in our local area. We've made actually really good friends with, you know, we feel almost like they're family. And we go see them quite often and hug and do all that kind of stuff. And we dance and we just, we just cut up and we just have a really great time. So I can do that and I can feel very comfortable with that. Then on the other, I have a, another girlfriend that she likes to go out and go dancing. So her and I are taking dancing lessons together. We're having a lot of fun. We're learning. I took uh, swing lessons a long time ago, getting back into that again. I'm really enjoying it. It's a nice, 
fun way to do exercise that I don't feel like I'm actually exercising, but believe me, I am. And so now we're learning some different uh, salsa and some different types of dances, and I'm really enjoying it. We have a wonderful instructor. Uh, I've connected with her here on Facebook, so you guys might see her from time to time. If you're in our local area, I hope you will seek her out and possibly do some dancing lessons with her because she's pretty awesome. She's very, very patient, very, very um, easygoing, and really knows her stuff. So I like to do a, a shout out um, for him. Her, Corinne is her name. And so we'll make sure that you guys see it on my Facebook page that you can connect with her. But do things that are fun for you. I have a friend that he um, he's picked up a chainsaw and now he carves he carves characters and things out of a chainsaw. Who would have known? Who would have known that would be fun? And I go over there and he makes things and I'm like, wow, look at this. And he made a, uh, he made me like this uh, container, you know, out of this dowel thing that he had in his garage. And I loved it. It's great. I have it in my little china cabinet thing. So, I mean, the thing is, is you can do anything you want to do as long as it's fun for you. And if you don't know what fun is, you need to start figuring that out because having fun is a great release of stress. It's a great, great release of life itself, you know, because we have to keep stepping forward in our lives, right? And that's what's so vital and so important. So let's see what was on the next thing on my list here. Oh, I love this here. Um, you have to get back on the horse again. We kind of talked about that, didn't we? We talked about getting out there, doing other things, trying new things, new experiences, you know, what makes you tick, trying to figure out that. But the biggest thing, here's the thing, here's the secret. If you're not doing these kind of things, if you're just, you know, existing, right, you've got to stop for a minute and think about what's holding you back because there is something holding you back. And the biggest thing is that F word, right? Fear. It's that F word that will stop you from doing anything that you want to achieve in life. It's the worst word out there. You know, so often, you know, my, you know, my kids were growing up and I'd say, don't say bad words. Well, I think that word is probably one of the worst ones ever because it's, 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 cr it just crumbles you, you know, you just stop in your tracks doing what you do. You just exist. You go to work, you go home, you eat, you sit there, watch TV, whatever, go to work, come home, sit there, watch TV, whatever. You don't live. Step into your life and start living it. And you know, when you know, when you start living is when you start giving to other people, you know, when you start creating joy for other people, that's when you're actually living your life. Living in your life is not just about you existing. It's about you participating. And that's what people don't get. So to be the better you that you can be, you have to actually give to someone else. News break. People don't realize that. You know, they don't realize that in order to actually be uplifted yourself, you have to lift someone else up. It's, it's a, new, a new thing. It's something that we, we never even thought about. Why? Because we, we live our lives in existing and we need to live it. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about really being the better you, being able to exist within your life, creating the life you want to have, but also giving to other people and enjoying that moment, enjoying what you're doing. That's, that's very cool, isn't it? So we want to think about our lives the way it is. Do we like do we like where it is? Do you like what we see? Do we like who we have become? And if we don't, if the answer is no, then we need to do something about it. We need to take action. We need to keep that four letter word so far from us because it, it's crumbling. It, it, just, it just stops you in your tracks. You can achieve anything you want to do, anything you want to do, as long as you can step forward through that fear. And so that's why I think is very, very cool. And you need to definitely get back on the horse, so to speak. I think that's in short, important. Um, okay. Dr. McGrail says he's trying to, it's told it's invalid. So let me see if we could do something. I'm just going to do a little technical stuff here. Okay. So if you guys would just bear with me for one minute. I'm going to um, 
just send him a quick message. If you guys don't mind, we're going to do this really quick. Because I would love to have him come on. I mean, it would be so great. You guys hear me talking all the time. So let's see. Okay, let's see. Let's see if he'll. I'm going to send him another one. And tell him to call me, right? So we can we can just do it over the phone. You. Okay. All right, so this is great. So we're we sending him a message. So hopefully, maybe he'll pop in here. And it would be awesome to be able to have him. So I'm going to go back here. But thank you for letting me do that because I appreciate it. You know, um, the land of internet and live is always crazy. Uh, we talked about trying something new, right? Get off, get off the norm and try something new. I think we talked about that a little bit. Um, I think it's kind of fun to do something new. I'm always doing things new. You know, I'm kind of, I hate that four letter word fear, but there are certain things I get a little bit afraid of because I'm scared of heights and things like that. But I try to be, um, I try to be outgoing. I try to do different things. And um, as long as I'm, I'm happy, you know, that is pretty good. Oh, this one I like. Foster new relationships. Foster new relationships. Isn't it awesome to be able to make new friends? Because you get a lot of different things from these friends that you make. You, you, When you step into their lives a little bit, number one, you understand that you know, your life maybe is not so difficult, right? Because you see other people's struggles, some of the struggles they go through. But the other thing is they enlighten you because what they do is they lift you up. And when you um, foster new friends, you, oh, I think that's the doctor. Let's see here. Hello? Yes. Hi, I'm going to put you on the speaker. I'm so sorry that you're not able to get through. It happens sometimes. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you on speaker so everybody can hear you. We are on the live broadcast. Okay, you are on speaker. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so I want to make sure you're turned up. The volume's up. So what we're talking about is if you can't get into the thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring your picture forward. And so everyone can see your picture there. So uh, they see it right there. And so, welcome to the show, John. It's John McGrail. He's a, he's a, I mean, it's crazy. So we have a little bit of a, a craziness going on here tonight, but that's what happens. So, but let me tell you a little bit about our, our guest tonight that we have. It's Dr. John McGrail, A Better You. Uh, Dr. John McGrail is more than um, a doctor. Let me tell you, he has established himself as a self-improvement expert and he's in life transformation and that is so awesome so thank you and welcome to the show can you hear me john oh, I'm here. okay yeah, I can. <laughs> i'm still trying to get in okay um, yeah i'm going to put you up here closer to the speaker so well let's talk about this what we were doing is we were going over um some of the uh information that i had gotten together with regards to I always do a little research ahead of time thank goodness because if I'd be in a pickle wouldn't I <laughs> if I didn't <laughs> so um but anyhow so what I went I was going over through some of these different steps and some of the steps that we had talked about prior to you coming on the show was find a hobby uh clean out your um you know baggage or whatever that you might have going on both uh, physically and mentally a volunteer. Oh. Oh. Okay, something's happening now. Oh, he's with us. Okay, let's stop this. Hold on. We're getting, this is getting exciting here. Let me see here. Here we go. Let's see. <laughs> now we got gotcha. you. There I am. <laughs> Technology, you have to love it. 
<laughs> I know, I know. It's 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 fun. But you know, that's what happens when you have a live show. Sometimes it's, you know, crazy. <laughs> Indeed. And I love live TV. So delighted <laughs> to be here again. Oh, it's wonderful to have you. So as I say, when we were talking about the better you, we were talking about various different different things. And so I was going through some of those. So tell us a little bit of how you got into really being the expert on self, you know, self-improvement, because that's quite a, you know, that's quite a task. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, as so many things do, it started with personal experience. There was a time in my life when I was a very unhappy camper and I don't mind telling talking about it because it's in the book. Um, I was very insecure. I was addicted to tobacco. I was in a marriage that never should have happened and um, became one of the poster children for codependency and neediness. And I really wasn't very happy. And a, a seminal moment in life as they happened uh, occurred for me. And I had, you know, what would be called an epiphany. I realized that, you know, I'm, I've got to clean my act up because only I can do it. And I went and got the help I needed to get rid of my insecurities and my addictions and my neediness and, and rediscover my self-esteem and self-confidence. And in that process, uh, you know, I had another awakening. Uh, I have always in one, one way or another in all the careers and jobs I've ever had, I've always ended up being an instructor. I was an instructor for the, for the Navy. When I was a pilot, I was an instructor in the airlines. I opened a production company and, ended up producing and writing mostly motivational and training programs. And so there was a pattern. And uh, in the process of rediscovering myself and, and cleaning up my act, I learned an awful lot. And then another seminal life moment occurred when I found myself suddenly unemployed and trying to figure out what I was going to do with the rest of my life. And I realized that what I really truly loved to do was teach and coach and mentor and whatnot. And that was the, the impetus for me going back to school and initially getting certified as a clinical hypnotherapist. And then the rest is sort of history. That's 16 years ago. And uh, that's how it happened. So, you know, it, it started with me figuring out myself and then realizing how empowered it was to get the help I needed and then being inspired to be that help for other people. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing, you know, that it's sometimes the life path that we go on, you know, and what it does for us and, and then how it can help and benefit other people. So it's, uh, it's amazing what you've experienced. And I want to thank you very much for not only sharing with us tonight, but also enduring you know, the struggles to be able to coming on the, on the show. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's great having you. And it goes to show you that you just don't give up, right? You know, you don't give up and you just keep, you just keep moving forward. And eventually something great will happen. Like you, you popped on the show. So it's awesome. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about, you know, if someone is out there struggling now, we, I went through some lists, uh, you know, so list some things, but if you had to give someone, you know, some words of wisdom, what would you share with them? Well, you know, one of the things that I see over and over again, and this is this is a, a, a recurring pattern, and it's been I've worked with thousands of people now over the years and, and, and worked up students. And one of the things that I see all the time is that people don't realize that that everybody has stuff. Most of my new clients and many of my workshop and seminar students come in and they think that they're the only one that has their issue, whatever that issue might be. And they also think there's something wrong with them. We are we are sold a bill of goods that we're supposed to just be happy-go-lucky and be able to get through problems. And we go to Facebook and these other uh, social media sites now, and we see everyone else's perfect life. And so people think that, one, there's something wrong with me. Two, I'm the only one with the problem. And three, I should be able to fix this on my own. And if I was to impart words of wisdom to the folks out there that may be suffering from some issue in their lives that's holding them back is that, you're not alone. There's nothing wrong with you. And that human beings, all of us, are, are innately resistant to change. Even when we want to make a change that we know is going to be powerful for us and that we really want to happen, doing it on our own is almost impossible because we have this innate resistance. It's called homeostasis in the trade or in the business. Homeostasis means we will cling to the familiar even when it's painful. So if you want to make a change, First of all, acknowledge it, acknowledge that you have it, and then find the help you need. And 
I promise everyone you have the resources within you to make whatever you change you wish and make it happen quickly and profoundly if you get the right assistance. That's the best wisdom I can give. That's, that's great advice. Absolutely great advice. Cece, I'm losing you. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yep, uh, there was a dropout for about 30 seconds. So anything you said after great advice, I lost. Okay. I, I was saying that um, the research that I have done um, states basically that when you're in a bad relationship, it takes about five years for the individual to actually break through, step away from that relationship. And so, you know, it's, it's a very difficult, tough time. And then when they do step away from it, then they don't, they're lost, you know, guilt, there's, you know, a tremendous amount of, of things that are going on that they have to, to recover from really. And so, yeah, so I totally get what you're saying. Well, yes, and, and that is absolutely true. But one of the misconceptions, and, and I don't mean to, to, to make light of any of the statistics, one of the misconceptions is that it has to take a long time to get over it once you've finally extricated yourself. And there is always a time factor. There's no question about it. But you don't have to take a long time to rediscover, if you will, to recover and to reconsolidate your power. Uh, I've seen people do it in a matter of months, literally, after many, many years of a painful relationship that was uh, a bad match or abusive in one way or another. I've seen people, bat if, when they get the right assistance and they have the desire and the commitment to do the work, I've seen people bounce back in, in literally a matter of months and within a year be in a loving, caring, nurturing relationship that they want and deserve. So it doesn't have to take a long time once you finally get out. Now, the getting out, yes, because of that homeostasis, you know, that's one of the things we deal with with abusive relationships. I, I was commissioned to write an article on, uh, on spousal abuse a few years ago by the Huffington Post. I don't believe it ever actually got published, excuse me. And in my research, I found that there's this circle of violence, they call it. You have an event, and then there's a refractory period, and there's apologies, and then another event, and it just goes around and around right. and around. And the battered woman or man, because it works both ways, mm -hmm. will stay, you know, all these apologies, it's never going to happen again. And they're actually convinced that it might have been their fault. And so they try and try and try, and then it just continues to happen. And what, we, what I found and what the research says is that only when the fear of staying in, I mean, this is the worst kind of relationship, only when the fear of staying is greater than the fear of leaving, will the person actually leave. And that's when the, an intervention can occur and they can start getting help. But you know, not all bad relationships are that extreme. Mm -hmm. Most of us have bad relationships where we just are in a mismatch for a variety of reasons and our core values don't match. And so there's, there's conflict and, and pain and they never last forever anyway, or, or you live a life of pain. Those are a, a lot easier to get out of if you can get the support and help you need uh, when you realize that this simply isn't working and it never will. Right. You know, and I think too, it's it's so valuable to seek out someone like yourself or, you know, there's other coaches out there and, and uh, you know, helpers and doctors and whatnot. But I, I really do feel that having someone to, to help you and to guide you and be a sounding board, you know, get real, will get you through faster, um, will help you. And so I, you know, I encourage that wholeheartedly. And um, I do run a divorce support group here locally. And, and I encourage each one of them to seek professional help. You know, they definitely need to go to a counselor of some sort, have their own, you know, counselor. And uh, that's so valuable. No one calls me until I'm on the show. Um, and that's so valuable to be able to move forward because I think that we can heal. You know, I think we can move forward in, and we can be even a better person than what we were in the past. Certainly, we're not the same person, right? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's, it's interesting that when we're, if we were to take a lifespan, when we're all born, we are all born full of unconditional love for ourselves completely formed, vastly abundant self-esteem. Uh, we don't believe there's no such thing as failure. And if we want to accomplish something, we just go and, and go about doing it. And we do it with a big smile on our face, even though we fail millions of times. And then 
over the course of our upbringing, usually through the actions of well-meaning but often misinformed people, our parents, then our teachers, our friends, our family, then society, we get that self-esteem beaten out of us. And we, get, we learn that love is a conditional emotion and we learn to devalue ourselves. You know, most kids in today's society are, are not raised with that nurturing um, feeling of you can do whatever you want if you put your mind to it and you're capable and you're a beautiful child. They're told everything that's not right with them. Why can't you be more like your brother? What's the matter with you? How come you couldn't get an A? Why did you have to get a B? And on and on and on it goes. By the time you get to be an adult, you're this, you know, inside, you're this quivering, insecure mess. And so very often the first person that comes along that pays attention to you and that allows you to feel good and validated, you, you, you end up marrying and boom. And, you know, it doesn't last very long because it was mismatched to begin with. You can't use the energy of another person to fill your voids. And I, I use this example all the time because if they leave, you still have your voids. So if you do the work, as you say, the healing and get yourself re-empowered, and it's very doable and it doesn't have to take a long time, then you can go meet somebody else that's done the same work. And when that comes together, it's a sharing of the power. Not, neither person will take advantage of it or exploit it because they know the other person will simply say, I'm not sharing anymore. And those are the relationships that last a lifetime. And I, I say this again, if there's another word of wisdom to everybody out there, it is possible. And there are many soulmates for people. It's not just one human being out of 7.3 billion that you have to try to find. That would be kind of impossible. But right. you have to do the work on yourself first. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Tell us a little bit about your book. What's the name of your book? And tell us about it and where we can find it. Well, thank you. The book is called The Synthesis Effect. Uh, the subtitle is Your Direct Path to Personal Power and Transformation. And essentially, the book is the story of my process. I started uh, this work as a clinical hypnotherapist. So hypnotherapy was my primary tool. And then as after a few years in, in practice, I, I began to learn other techniques that I combined with hypnosis and hypnotherapy, which in and of itself is a very powerful uh, modality for creating change and transformation. And then when I got my PhD and really started researching the human behavior from a variety of perspectives, sociology, anthropology, philosophy, both ancient and modern, modern cutting edge science, I started learning things about how we behave, how we grow, how we develop that, that were just mind boggling to me. And I began to incorporate some of this knowledge into my work, along with more spiritually based uh, techniques and exercises. And that was the, the essence, if you will, of the synthesis process. And the reason I call it synthesis is because we take the conscious, logical, co uh, cognitive mind that we're all used to using, which is only about 10% of our mind, by the way, and we engage the much more powerful subconscious spiritual mind and we bring them together using these tools and techniques to create or synthesize a better you, whatever that means. So the book is designed and written to help someone learn how to do the process, do the process. And along the way, I share a lot of stories of people just like you and me, everyday people that were a mess and aren't anymore because they learn to do this. And it's not hard. It takes commitment and, and um, a, a, a true desire. But it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like a personal session with me. It's very casually written. There's a lot of great stories in there. I make it as humorous as possible. And from page one, you are beginning to do the process of synthesis. So by the time you get to the end of the book, you are fully engaged in changing and transforming your life, whatever that means to you. It doesn't really matter what it is. It's a, it's a process that works across behaviors. Wow, oh, it sounds awesome. I think it's a definitely a great book for many out there that can, uh, can you know, read it. They should definitely get it and read it and understand that it's, you know, it's really a process that we have to go through. And the more that we can fill into our minds, the more that we can action that we can take, it will definitely make us better. Kathy, I want to just say, um, Catherine, I want to thank you for joining us here uh, tonight on the show. It's, uh, it's great having you here in our lobby. So I do appreciate you joining us. Those that are um, listening on other pages, unfortunately, we can't see you. So you got to come to the WGSNDB Going Solo Network Facebook page for us to be able to see you and uh, everyone else. So, But uh, it's okay if you don't want to step forward into the lobby and then we don't, uh, we don't see you. We just know that you're there listening. We appreciate Appreciate that. So it's wonderful to have you. Well, is there any tidbits that you'd like to leave our, you know, leave with our uh, listeners tonight? Anything you would like to share? 
Well, again, if I could re re just reiterate, if you're living in pain, if there's something in your life that's holding you back, you don't have to suffer with it. You don't have to be stuck with it. And that's one, one of the things that I love to do is to help people. Rule number one in my methodology is that life is supposed to be fun. Now, that means different things to different people, but I love mm -hmm. helping people find their fun. And again, it's doable. You're probably going to need a little help to make it happen. But if you get the help, why not? I mean, we're here for hopefully for a, a nice chunk of time, 80, 90 years. And why not make that 80 or 90 years of joyful, abundant experience rather than one of suffering? I don't know where we came up with you have to suffer to get anything out of life, but it's not true. <laughs> yeah, that's totally not true. Well, we are scrolling your website. So if anyone wants to contact you, uh, the information is right there. We hope that, that you'll uh, pick it up. You can re-listen to the show again if you'd like, if you didn't catch all of it. Um, those out there uh, that are picking it up, we do uh, rebroadcast it. And so we hope that you will do that. And it, it is awesome having you on the show, John. I do appreciate it very much. Well, thank you, CC, And I'm so sorry we had the technical difficulties in the beginning, but I'm glad we connected. It was a, it was a delight to be with you. Well, that's great. Well, we'll have to twist your arm and have you come back again. So I think that's what's important. You know, you've got, you've got a lot out there that I think can help people. And so it's just, it's great having you on board here with us and also being able to, you know, express that to, to share with other people that it's just, it's just really finding that workable person that you can have in your life, someone like yourself to be able to help move you through to the next level. And, you know, the thing is, John, we're all evolving, aren't we? And so wherever we're at today, we won't be, we won't be there you know, tomorrow we'll keep, we'll keep moving forward. So sometimes having the connection with someone like yourself throughout our being, throughout our lifetime, so we can reach back. So like whatever, whatever experiencing we're having at the moment, you know, if we're able to get through that with, with someone like yourself, a help with help like that, then when something else comes up in our lives, we know we can come back and connect with you again and be able to move forward again. So it's it's really nice having that kind of buddy system, I think, in order to be able to move forward. So it's Absolutely. great. Yeah. Absolutely. Life is supposed to be an evolution and a process of creation and growth. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and I couldn't say it better. By the way, if anybody does reach out, I always uh, return inquiries with a personal response. I don't have my people do it. And there's never any obligation. It's completely complimentary. And so I invite anybody with questions uh, to reach out, and I'd be happy to uh, to chat with you. And again, my thanks for having me on. I'd love to come back anytime. You let me know. Okay, that would be great. Well, I want to thank you so much. I do appreciate it. This is Cece with Going Solo. You are listening to WGSN DB Going Solo Network, and we had the most awesome uh, Dr. John McRail on with us here today. Sorry about the technical problems, but sometimes you know good things are worth waiting for. So I, I think we'll, we've uh, we've definitely embraced that today. So we will be back at you next Thursday, same time, same place, and I look forward to it. In the meantime, if you want to reach me, all you have to do is go on going solo network at gmail.com send me a message i'm happy to uh, message you back or you know maybe we can connect by phone or whatever that um that you, you know we will, you want to do so we can able to do that also we have a lot of really great things happening we have several um clubs that you can join so to speak um i do a lot of that different activities so you can just get that on going solo network uh, dot com and then of course the station is at uh, wgs and DB, uh, dot com. So you can uh, reach us right there if you'd like, or Going Solo Media. I'm all around Facebook, so you can just connect with me anytime, any, any place there. And uh, we would love to be able to express and share with you some of these wonderful friendships that we have made here on Going Solo Network, like Dr. John McGrail. You know, sometimes if you reach out to me and you tell me what your situation is, what's going on with you, I can probably connect you with somebody that's pretty awesome that can really home in on what it is that you're going through that can help you walk through that and be able to get to the place that you want to be. So we want to make sure that we're here for you. We're kind of the connector and uh, that's what it's all about. So I want to thank you again for listening to Going Solo with Cece and I'll be here next week. Talk to you later. Bye.